What's up guys? My name is Lake Castlevania here again with my good friend David Alexander from Icon Collective. Uh, so this is the eighth and final video in our series on music theory. Um, we've laid down for you a basic, couple of different... You basic know, ground rules. Yeah, basic ground rules. But today we're going to talk about how to break the rules, yes. how to step outside of the things we've shown you and get even more creative with the music that you're making. So I think one of the things that we can start with is the idea of the C minor scale that we've been talking about the whole time. Um, I'd like to actually show you how to remove two notes from that minor scale and turn it into we call into what we call a five tone scale or a pentatonic scale. Um, and the reason I like this uh, combination of notes. Yes. Basically, you can't hit a wrong note. You can't they all hit a sound wrong good note. together every time. So, yeah. if you're just riffing out with some friends or trying to come up with a melody that you know is going to work, uh, this is a good one to just jump to. Exactly. So, the the main scale, uh, what we do to any minor scale, is we pull out the second note and we pull out the sixth note. So, let's show an example of that. Here's C minor. The second note would be D and the sixth note would be A flat. So if we avoid these notes in the process of making a melody, we can continue to leave the melody being very uplifting. Uh, and it, I've heard a lot of tracks that use a pentatonic scale or these collection of five oh, yeah. notes. It just works. So I haven't pre-thought pre of anything that I'm going to play, but I'll just... That, like, that's so hooky, right? Yeah. And then you combine that with, um, you know, a different bass notes within the scale. Hmm. Can riff all day on it. Record that. I may want to use that. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is, a very simple tip. Uh, instead of adding more stuff, take stuff away. What are we taking away? Taking away the second and sixth uh, note in the scale. You can use that for bass lines, riffs, melodies. Uh, there you have it, the pentatonic scale. The next step we want to show you is based off the previous pentatonic scale. And what we're going to do is we're going to add one note that is completely outside the scale to turn this into a blue scale. Uh, but I'd like to do this from the perspective of E flat minor scale. So let me show you that scale first. It's uh, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, B, and D flat. So it looks like this. It's interesting because when I think about the pattern, what the scale looks like, I always see a horseshoe right here. Right? If you look <laughs> at the uh, visualizer and then the two black notes. So if you see that all the way up and down the keyboard, you have the E-flat minor scale. But now to turn that into the pentatonic scale, we're going to take away the second and the sixth. And what are we left with? That leaves you with just the black notes. So I always think of the E-flat scale when I think of the pentatonic scale, because it's an easy way to just riff on the, all these black notes and never hit a bad, sour note. Exactly. It's all right here. Except I just hit a, a sour note. Except when you hit white notes. Right, but here we go. <laughs> So there's the pentatonic scale. Um, I, uh, I think of that as a Stevie Wonder scale. Is that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so um, what we want to do is we want to look at the note that's in between the fourth and the fifth note, which should be one, two, three, four, five. There we find a note that's not in the scale. And that's what I call our blues note. So if we add that note to the pentatonic scale, we have a blues scale. Right? And it's, yeah. depending on how you play it, you can make it sound bluesy or you can make it uh, sound dark. We actually have an example by um, Bro Safari. Yep. And, and they use this scale um, in an interesting way. So uh, let's play a little bit that, of that so they can hear it. Cool. Here we go. It's kind of driving. Yeah. So they're basically playing one, the five, the blues, blue note. So they're just using the first, the third, the blues, and the fifth. 
It's not exactly correctly, but you get the idea. Right. Uh, so there, we've broken the rule. We've taken two notes out, and we've added a note that's not even in this scale. That is the blues scale. So our next example of how to break the rules is uh, a move that I like to use a lot. Um, One of my favorites. Yeah, Knife Party use it in some of their tracks. Um, it's called the Phrygian Scale. And basically what we're doing is just showing you another way to alter the scale. C minor, um, the minor scale. Right, alter the minor scale mm -hmm. uh, by changing just the two and dropping that down one pitch. So in C minor, uh, instead of playing D, we're going to play C sharp or D, D flat. flat. And actually, um, I hear this a lot in techno. I use it a lot in my bass lines. Um, here's a couple of examples of what it sounds like. Re really kind of dark sound, right? Yeah. Um, I know that Knife Party uses this a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's an F minor. But again, instead of playing the second note on the scale, we play the one pitch below it. A lot a lot of mileage on that one. Yeah. Um, I hear a lot in horror movies. Yeah, uh, I used it in the film score that I did recently for John Wick. If I, if I were to play that on a piano in upper register, uh, it would sound very, very creepy. Yeah. So, Phrygian scale, there you have it. Next alteration that we want to show you is based on kind of the Phrygian skill that we just showed you, where you remove uh, the second note. What we're going to do now is we're going to continue to use that flat second, not use the second, and add another note that's outside the scale. Um, what we do is we go to the third note in the scale, which if we're in C minor, it would be E flat, and we're just going to raise it by one pitch. So if we combine that with the flat second, you get what's called a Spanish gypsy kind of scale. And this can be very useful in tracks as well. It sounds like this. So you don't have to play that melody, but by changing that minor third uh, and raising it up a pitch, you get a lot of mileage out of that Spanish yeah, scale. Absolutely. All right, the next example that we're going to show you on breaking some of the rules that we laid down earlier is uh, a trick that I use a good bit. Um, so in our first example of when we showed you chords, um, we told you that the five chord would be minor. Mm -hmm. However, you can change that to be major, That's and that'll right. give your track a little more of a classical sort of feel. In fact, I use this uh, style in a track I did called Disintegration, which was on my Provocation EP, which came out on Mousetrap in September of last year. 2014, yeah. 13. 13. <laughs> We're not in the future yet. Yeah, I, I think it's 2015. Anyways, play this amazing track. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, there's the movement. Yeah, so you can hear that kind of classical feel that it has to it. Um, again, it's a move that I use a lot, and I just I think it's really cool. I like it. Uh, if we show that example in C minor, the one chord is C minor, the five chord is G minor. But if we make that major, it kind of uh, has a stronger pull to the one and gives it that classical feel. Um, you can also use that when you're developing melodies, so as you're playing in the C minor scale. <laughs> Very classical. So there's yeah. another little breaking the rule. Uh, don't stick with the quality of the chord. Uh, on the five, make it major instead of minor. And finally, the concept of changing that five chord to a major you can sort of apply that to any of the other chords in the scale. For example, the one chord is in a minor scale is minor, but why not break the rule and make that major? Um, so you could have a progression, and then here it is with it major. 
a lot more uplifting. Um, you could also change the four chord. Normally it's minor. But what if you make it major? Kind of uh, a resolution there, like a cleaning of the palate. It just feels uplifting. Yeah. Um, you can try that with any of the chords in the scale. You can take the, the three chord and it's usually uh, major and make it minor. Um, break some of the rules, it's going to lead you down some interesting paths. Um, and these are five or six tips um, that we use all the time. Yeah. Some of them can be a little bit uncommon, but they can be fun when you break them out. Yeah, it can make your track stand out in a way that uh, stand out above the rest from the others. So um, I just want to thank you for your attention. If any of these concepts don't make sense, go back and watch the other seven videos that we put together. Uh, to wrap things up, I just want to thank Dylan for taking the time to come down to Icon Collective, the uh, music production school here in Burbank, and uh, sharing some of your insights and some of the tools that you use to make this amazing music. Uh, where can people find you and uh, learn more about you? Um, the best place is probably just go to my website, lakecastlevania.com. We'll put it up on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's links to all my other, you know, hit me up on Twitter. If you guys have questions about anything, like, I like to be very interactive with fans of my music and, of course, anybody that's checking out these videos. So Beautiful. And if you want to learn how to live a creative lifestyle, wake up every morning, make music, um, come check us out. Uh, Icon Collective, you'll find the web address at the bottom, learntoproduce.com. We're in L.A. We would love for you to come down and take a tour, spend a day with us, and see what this whole making music thing is about. I'm David Alexander. <laughs> it's my friend Dylan. Thanks for your time.